Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a congratulatory cable from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on His Royal Highness is leaving the hospital in good health, wishing him abundant health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also received a similar cable of thanks from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defence of Saudi Arabia, Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud. On behalf of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, today received a letter from the President of Tunisia, Beji Ked Esibsi, inviting His Majesty the King to the 30th Arab League Summit, which will be held on the 31st of March 2019 in Tunisia. The letter was delivered to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince by the Tunisian Foreign Minister and the President of Tunisia's Special Envoy, Minister Janahoui. During the meeting, which took place at Rifa Palace, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Tunisian Minister of Foreign Affairs discussed Bahraini-Tunisian bilateral relations and highlighted both countries' commitment to continue advancing cooperation across all areas. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince recognised the crucial role of the upcoming Arab Summit in bolstering joint Arab collaboration and advancing shared strategic interests of prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince went on to convey His Majesty the King's best wishes to the Tunisian President, wishing Tunisia success in hosting the 30th Arab Summit. For his part, the Tunisian Foreign Minister highlighted the positive role Bahrain continues to play in supporting Arab and Islamic development affairs and expressed thanks to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for supporting the advancement of Bahraini-Tunisian bilateral cooperation. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today met the Chief Executive Officer of the Italian energy company NESPA, Claudia Discalazzi, on the occasion of signing an MOU with Bahrain's National Oil and Gas Authority, NUGA, at Rifa Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince noted that in line with the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Kingdom continues to prioritise oil and gas exploration projects, such as those that led to the discovery of Bahrain's largest ever oil field last year. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also noted Bahrain's pursuit of a smart oil economy that leverages diversification and promotes sustainable growth. The Minister for Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today received the newly appointed Commander of the US Fifth Fleet Combined Maritime Forces, Vice Admiral James Malloy at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the long-standing ties between Bahrain and the US. In this regard, His Royal Highness underscored the Kingdom's commitment to further strengthening bilateral cooperation, particularly within military and defence. The Crown Prince welcomed Vice Admiral Malloy to the Kingdom of Bahrain, wishing him success in his new appointment. The meeting also provided an opportunity to review regional security challenges and areas of mutual interest. The Government Action Plan 2019-2022 Committee held its first meeting at the Representatives Council today to discuss with the Executive Authority the foundations and pillars of the plan. The meeting was chaired by the Representatives Council Speaker, Fawzia bint Abdullah Zainal, in the presence of the Deputy Prime Minister and the Head of the Government Delegation, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the second Deputy Speaker of the Representatives Council, President of the Government Action Plan GAP Study Committee, Ali Ahmed Zayed, 
and a number of ministers and representative councils members. The representative's council speaker welcomed the president and members of the government delegation, expressing hope that the GAP study will embody the democracy established by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa through the reform programme and the development of the gains achieved during his era. She expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for the government's keenness and interest, highlighted by submitting the gap on a constitutional date. She highlighted the importance of the Representatives Council will give to the gap. The Representatives Council Speaker affirmed the importance of cooperation and coordination between the two sides in discussing the gap by the committee for its importance in enabling the Legislative Authority to monitor the government's performance, which represents the core of parliamentary work. For his part, the Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah, conveyed the greetings of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to the Speaker and members of the Representatives Council and their appreciation to the Council's national role in achieving advancement and prosperity for the Kingdom and its people in light of the solid basis of the Legislative and Executive Authorities. Sheikh Khalid highlighted the Government's readiness to translate the vision of His Majesty the King, which was included in the High Letter of Commission and His Majesty's speech during the Government's constitutional oath, and His Majesty's speech during the opening of the first session of the fifth legislative term, in addition to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's speech and the Government's 2019-2022 Government Action Plan. He noted that the challenges faced today require cooperation to achieve the goal of His Majesty the King, that is, the citizen is the centre of development and the biggest purpose. The Deputy Premier added that the slogan, Sustainable Economic and Social Security in the Framework of a Financial Balance reflects the national priorities on which the partnership between the legislative and executive branches will be built over the next four years. He also highlighted that the partnership between the two authorities ensures achieving the main purpose of the Government Action Plan, which is to achieve positive economic growth in line with improving the financial situation under the Fiscal Balance Programme and meeting the aspirations of the citizens and maintaining gains. He reiterated that the Government's Action Plan represents general directives, which will be translated into projects when the Cabinet refers this draft state budget law for the fiscal years 2019 to 2020 to the Council of Representatives. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, gave a presentation on the Fiscal Balance Programme to acquaint the members of the Council of Representatives with the details of the programme, its various initiatives and its targeted results. He stressed that the Fiscal Balance Programme doubles the efforts initiated by the Government since 2015 with the aim of restructuring the public finances, raising the quality of services, enhancing the efficiency of governance and spending, taking into account citizens' gains, reducing expenses and increasing revenues. The two sides agreed to hold another meeting in the presence of the Government delegation participating next Wednesday to further study the Government's action plan. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, today chaired the Council's weekly meeting, in which the Council rejected a draft law amending Article 31 of Law 15 of 2007 on narcotic and psychotropic substances as a result of the existence of many in effect legal texts that achieve the aim of the draft law, which is incriminating those who solicit minors. The Council also rejected a draft law amending a number of provisions of the Reform and Rehabilitation Foundation Law as the desired objectives are guaranteed by the provisions of the Reform and Rehabilitation Foundation Law and its executive regulations. President of the Bahrain Basketball Association, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa patronised the draw for the third edition of the Khalifa bin Salman Basketball Cup for Men. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa affirmed that the Khalifa bin Salman Cup has come to represent a fixture in Bahraini basketball and that it reflects the keen interest of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, in creating a conductive environment for athletic achievements. His Highness said that the Khalifa bin Salman Basketball Cup for men has become a milestone in Bahrain sport and a suitable place to confirm the successes achieved by the Bahraini basketball and its development in an effective and clear manner in its administrative and technical systems. The patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, who is always keen to support the sports movement in the Kingdom and create the perfect atmosphere in order to ensure the continuation of sports achievements. 
He said that the first and second edition of the Khalifa bin Salman Basketball Cup has received strong participation from the national clubs who present exciting levels in order to win the trophy. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa expressed his wishes to the national clubs for success. His Highness also expressed his appreciation for the contribution of national companies in supporting the Khalifa bin Salman Cup. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, signed a memorandum of understanding with the Italian company Eni today in light of the Cabinet's approval to sign an agreement with the company for cooperation in the field of oil and gas on projects for the extraction of oil and gas in the Northern Territorial waters to maximise the capacity of Bahrain's production. Eni's CEO, Claudia Descalzi, signed the MOU in the presence of a number of officials from the National Oil and Gas Authority, NUGA. The oil and gas holding company, Noga Holding, Tatuia Petroleum and a number of executives of oil companies. He also praised the role of the High Committee for Natural Wealth and Economic Security under the chairmanship of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in developing plans for the exploration operations where Noga and the national oil companies were directed to improve the level of geological survey by employing the best available techniques. The Minister said that the Northern Territorial waters of the Kingdom are estimated to cover 2,800 square kilometres, where this area remains largely unexplored. The Minister noted that signing the MOU with the ENI enhances cooperation, investment and holding comprehensive discussions to review all aspects related to technical and commercial conditions for potential exploration and development. He stressed that NOGA attaches great importance in strengthening relations and enhancing cooperation with all international oil companies, as well as providing all means of support and assistance to secure the Kingdom's energy needs and to ensure the sustainability of growth and achieve Bahrain's 2030 vision. Mr Descalzi inspired the company's pride in signing the MOU and the opportunity to explore the potential of Block 1 and to start cooperating and investing in a country that was one of the first in the Gulf to produce oil. We are very much excited actually in all levels. The technical people, they have worked uh, uh, with the ENI team for more than uh, one and a half years for now. Uh, we spent a lot of time and effort uh, to finalize all the findings uh, and to, to gather all the available, uh, available data. Uh, 
and finally, uh, it's, it's, it's a big day for us really to, to reach after this long time, after really uh, 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 invited a number of, of, of uh, IUCs, they have come to Bahrain, they have visited our data room, looked at the data. A uh, uh, number of them, they have signed what we call a JSA or Joint Study Agreements. e &I is the is the only company they have uh, been more proactive and really looking at uh, uh, additional data, doing some reprocessing for the available 3D seismic. And they came up with sort of a prospectivity for that block uh, and they showed their, their uh, interest to come and bid for... Uh, for block one, basically. So it's a big day. I think that is an important moment for our cooperation, for the bilateral cooperation in the economic fields, in the oil and gas sector in particular. And it, indeed it's a sector, oil and gas, where the Italian presence has been constant and uh, consistent throughout the years. Uh, as you maybe you know, the uh, Italian technology and uh, components were uh, vital to set up in cooperation with the government of Bahrain, the uh, petrochemical industry in Bahrain. And then our participation continued and uh, we are very happy today to see a new chapter, the opening of a new chapter of this fruitful cooperation for both parties. Clearly it's very important for us. Uh, I hope that will be very important for Bahrain as well. Uh, it's the first time that we step in and we start working uh, in Bahrain. We work in the last uh, one half year to make a, a detailed study of these blocks and uh, understand all the perspectivity and all the different possible blocks. So now we are quite confident that uh, we are ready to start. We, we are ready to drill as soon as we finalize the, the agreement. That is an MOU. We need also the, the decree law. And then we start drilling the first prospect. We have a, 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 a upside potential in terms of different kind of uh, perspectivity and different kind of uh, stratigraphic traps. So that is what, what we want to investigate. So it's, it's, it's important. There is a new team, is a new, new, new uh, initiatives that uh, uh, we like a lot. But as I said before, we like. Uh, the kind of relationship uh, that we establish with the, with the teams, with the people at each level, uh, very open relationship uh, with a lot of competencies and uh, in, the, in the easy, very easy way to exchange information and take a, a common decision. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Isam bin Abdullah Khalaf, asserted that the Ministry gives importance to development projects in the capital governorate, especially the old areas. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the Ministry is currently working at implementing a number of road projects and the maintenance of sewage and rainwater networks. The Minister noted the beginning of the road development project in Zanabas village, which will be completed by the end of 2019. The Supreme Judicial Council revealed the achievements made during the year 2018, which focused on the performance of the judiciary, the cases recorded, in addition to the total number of cases that have been resolved. This came during a press conference chaired by the Court of Cassation President, Abdullah bin Hassan Abu Ainin, in which he presented to a number of media representatives in the Kingdom a set of objectives that the Supreme Judicial Council adopted in a manner that enhances the efficiency of the judicial performance in Bahrain. These objectives are part of the SJC Strategic Plan 2020. Abu Inayin noted that these development initiatives have mainly focused on increasing the speed of implementation, taking into account the achievement of justice and the implementation of technological transformation, in addition to the application of the civil lawsuit management system, as well as implementing training programmes to develop the scientific and practical capabilities of the judiciary. The National Bureau for Taxation has launched a new service for consumers through its website, which allows the possibility of verifying that any company, commercial, institution or business has a certificate for registration for value-added purposes, and thus imposing it on goods and services subject to tax under the provisions of the law. The launch of the new service comes within the framework of ensuring the interest of the consumer and the right to obtain the correct information as well as the creation of all factors necessary for the success of the process of the initial launch of value-added tax and implement it with the utmost transparency. 
The new service will serve as an effective tool for the immediate monitoring of any irregularities in the field of the initial stage of the application of the value added in relation to the implementation of the tax by non-registered bodies. Under the new service, the consumer will be able to verify whether the companies are registered to collect the value added tax from consumers or not by entering the VAT number or the tax number or the commercial registration number or through the QR code survey which is presented on the tax certificate. In the case of registration and validity, the data of the entity will appear after the search. In case of non-registration, the registrant shall immediately inform the National Bureau for Taxation. The National Bureau for Taxation announced today that a tax exemption logo entitled VAT Free will be distributed across various establishments in order to place the logo on goods and services that are not subject to VAT. This new measure builds on the government's efforts to strengthen consumer protection and transparency and ensuring the correct implementation of VAT. The National Bureau for Taxation stressed the importance of the various establishments to adopt this measure, making sure the logo is clear and visible to consumers. In this regard, the National Bureau for Gulf Taxation further stressed the importance of clearly placing the VAT certificate of registration that entitles these entities to collect VAT on products and services that are subject to it.